how to import your own or third party tracks. This video will show you how to import your own multi tracks or those you've purchased from third party sites. You don't need to watch this video if you only ever use Worship Backing Band multi tracks. You can import zipped WAVs, MP3s, or AAC files into the transition player. The stems do not need to be identical in length, but the length of the longest stem will determine the length of the full song. You'll find that the Worship Backing Band Player interface is the same on Windows, Mac and iPad, except for Edit Mode. Edit Mode is not available on the iPad. So to get into Edit Mode, when you're in the Transition Player, press the letter E. This will take you into the Edit Mode and you can toggle it backwards and forwards by pressing and repressing E. Once in edit mode, a few things disappear from the screen, and if you select the library button, you'll see a message saying drag a zip file to import a song or edit. You can either edit an existing song from your library or import a new song by dragging the zip file in. The name of the zip file is how you want the song name to be displayed in the library. So drag the song to be edited into the central part of the player. The edit window gives you a spreadsheet view of the timeline which is across the bottom of the screen. You'll see the section name, the start time and beats listed as well as tempo, time signature and key. You'll need to edit these sections for a new song that you're importing. Let's assume that you're dragging in a new zip file. Looking inside the zip file, using something like File Explorer, you'll be able to see the various stems that will be imported. You can have as many stems in the zip file as come with the download, so for example 20 but we'll always need to combine these so that you end up with 14 stems or fewer in the end. The editor makes that very simple to do. The names of the stems are not really important as long as when you do the import you can recognise which stem is which so that you can assign it to the name that you want it to have in the player. So for example, ELEC1 and ELEC2 would be our standard naming convention for two electric guitar stems. But you can use whatever has already been assigned to you and you don't have to rename the WAV files inside the zip file to match those that we have in Worship Backing Band Multitracks. So to import your file, drag the zip file into the player edit screen. A message comes up saying import tracks, add tracks from, in this case, abidewithme.zip. So I'm going to select OK to continue and then the track assignment window pops up. The track file name lists all the audio files that it's found in the zip file and the track name is the name that the audio file is going to be called in the player. If you give multiple tracks the same name during the import process it will bounce those into a single combined stem and then put them into the player. This is ideal when you've got more than 14 stems in your zip file. So sometimes you'll get multiple drum stems like toms, kick, snare, cymbals all separately. If you name them all drums, you'll end up with a single combined drum stem, which is easier to work with in a live worship setting. Go through each imported stem and rename them. You click the three little dots beside each stem and naming options will appear. You'll be shown name options such as click or cue, percussion, electric, and then sub options from those. For example, vocals then gives you naming option of vocal, vox, BGV or background vocals, and choir. Keys gives you options keys, keys 1, keys 2, synth, and piano. The user picks from the menu and assigns the best fit stem name to the WAV from the track. Whatever stems the user does not have just won't be used and won't show up in the end track, so you don't have to have click and natural click and intro click. The assignment's up to the user.
When you've finished assigning tracks, click on the Convert 14 Tracks button. A dialog box pops up saying Converting and gives you the song name. And once you click OK to continue, it will take some time. A window will then pop up as each stem is converted. Depending on the specification of your computer, this should take no more than a few minutes and you'll see the progress as each window pops up saying which stem is being converted. Finally, you'll see a message that says converted 14 tracks uh, with your song name and that should appear in your library. Click OK and the track window goes away. You're still in editor screen and you should see the library list and the recently imported song should be showing in that list. So in this case, abide with me here. We now need to tell the player where the important junction points of the song are. So we need to edit the song. These are so that we can identify song sections such as the introduction, verses, chorus and bridge. So we drag the song into the editor and then if we look in the mixer to check the song is there, it doesn't have any sections yet because those haven't been assigned. The first thing is to assign the tempo, time signature and key. These can be changed at any time. And the best way to work with song sections is to use the beat counts accurately to your tempo. So you simply listen to each section of the song and count the beats. Alternately, you can enter time, minutes, seconds and decimal seconds instead of beats for each song if you have those. So at the beginning of this song, if I add some sections, this just prepares me to be able to get on with things. I know that my counting is eight beats long. And I happen to know because I've counted it that my introduction is 32 beats long. So I call that 32. And then here I will just name it and then we go through each section. So you may need to listen to these and count the beats. I know that I've got verse one, 32 beats, chorus one, just making sure to name each of the tracks, 32 beats. And I can at any time add more sections. So then there might be a link, for example. And once I've got through doing this, at any point, I can save the song. So when I save the song and I come back into my mixer, E to get out of edit mode, we'll see that these song sections appear along the bottom of the song. If I skip to any of these song sections, I can press play. Keep counting the beats if I need to. And then once I've counted up more of those beats, I can come back into my library and my editor and drag the song in at any stage to add new sections and specify how many beats they are until my whole song is saved and then built up. As well as adding sections with the plus button, if at any stage I've got too many sections, I can simply remove a section using the minus button. And again, at any time, use the save song button. I pre-use E to come out of edit mode and back into the main player and then, as normal, the song can be played as any other song would be. The iPad player does not have an edit function. So if you want to use non-worship backing band multitracks in the iPad player, you'll first need to import and edit them in the Mac or PC transition player.
Once the song is saved, a copy of the zip file from the Mac or PC library folder can be moved into your iCloud drive on Mac or PC and it will then sync to the iPad player and can be used there.